Good morning. It's a beautiful day for a 600 yard match and we're going to be retesting the Savage Axis rifle that we've been building for about a year now. Make sure you check out the playlist over here and be sure to subscribe if you haven't been following along with this uh, because again the rifle will be changing over time. Uh, we have a pretty good thing going on right now but we have some other matches coming up in the future and I'm sure there'll be some other tweaks on the rifle. Uh, we have that 1000 yard match coming up in about three weeks so today's 600 yard match should be a really good test bed to see how the upgrades that I've made to this uh, have improved the, uh, the, the handling and the actual shooting quality of the rifle. Uh, some of the things that we've done between the last match and now, the primary problem was the scope, which was a, uh, a Simmons, and that just didn't really work out. The glass just wasn't good enough for us to get really tight groups. It worked. I was able to keep all the shots on target, and I don't think I fell outside the seven ring, I don't think. But uh, we can definitely improve that. So this is a Falcon M18 Plus uh, second focal plane rifle scope. This is really nice. If you want to check out that review, it's right over here on the side. Um, we also have a new butt pad. This is going to be a lot squishier, a lot more comfortable. Uh, that was one of the problems that I had shooting last time is that the, uh, the fin, I mean, it was almost like just a sheet of plastic on the back uh, that came with the Boyd stock was really beating me up pretty good. Uh, this is very comfortable. I put 50 rounds, you know, back to back through this thing so far, you know, with that butt pad and it feels really nice. I have this temporary cheek riser. Um, I wanted to have the more permanent one made out of Kydex done for this match. And I want to do a tutorial on how I was going to do a non-destructive Kydex cheek riser. But uh, the Kydex just didn't come in in time. So hopefully we'll have that for the 1000 yard match. But for now, this will work just fine. This is going to get my face in the right place, so I'm just going to be looking straight through the rifle scope. And as a reminder, we're shooting 7mm 08. We're going to be doing uh, 162 grain ELD match bullets. I'm using Varget for the powder, and you know, if I'm really stable, it's a 0.5 MOA uh, five-shot group that I can get through this thing, even with this thin barrel. And um, uh, in the prone position, I'm usually seeing anywhere between that, you know, half MOA and then three quarters MOA. So it's going to be pretty accurate. Um, as long as I can read the wind okay, it's going to be good because today the wind is going to be a little bit wild. Uh, it's going to be coming from a, from a pretty favorable direction. The prevailing wind around here is usually kind of south southwest. That's where the wind is going to be coming from if the forecast is right. Right now it feels like it's coming out of the north northeast. Uh, so at some point, I imagine it's going to switch. But yeah, we're going to be getting up toward 20 miles an hour, which is, you know, not exactly the easiest wind, but it's something that we're pretty used to shooting out here uh, at this range, at this club. Um, and it's going to be coming from a direction that we're used to seeing. It's not an easy direction, really, but at least it's one that we're used to shooting in. Uh, in the last couple of matches, we had these headwinds and tailwinds that were just, they were awful. <laughs> Everything was just switching back and forth. Really tough to shoot. So uh, yeah, this time we're going to be coming, it's going to be coming pretty much straight across. And we are, because it's coming out of the south and going over a hill, there's going to be swirling winds. There's going to be stuff that's, you know, doing some vertical changes. So it's going to be a lot of uh, wind reading today. It's going to be difficult, but it shouldn't be as difficult as the past couple of times. We'll see how that goes. We'll have unlimited sliders. Alright. Uh, I got 184 with the miss, though. So. 
We just finished the 600 yard match here at Red Castle Gun Club and uh, I ran into one of the guys that I've been chatting with online and uh, he was able to make it out for this match. Uh, I'm going to let him tell his story about what happened today first. Uh, it, again, you know, it's 600 yards prone, so how'd it go? I actually did pretty good, I, I did, uh, until I had a mechanical failure. I had something going on with my primers, uh, there was burning holes through them. My ejector stopped grabbing the hole, or, or actually the, the, the extractor, and it got stuck out. I couldn't figure out what was going on, so I had to call her quits, but I think I did pretty good. I got a couple of bulls out of it. Yeah, yeah, it sounded like the, the shooting itself was going well, and we'll have to get a close-up of the uh, the bolt face for you, because it's, it's, it's pretty etched. It looks a lot like yeah. mine. <laughs> little, little craters on the moon there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so uh, what is the uh, the rifle here? A Savage VT-11, or varmint. It's got a 24-inch barrel. It's kind of a heavy barrel. It's fully floated. And, uh, it's a pretty good rifle. Yeah, I, I really like. Yeah, I really like the setup. And you were telling me about the uh, the mag. It's a kind of a custom conversion. Right, right. I bought this off a guy who's making these for these. I don't think they make a 10-round mag for this. I couldn't find one. I got impatient. Found somebody's making one. I said, here, you know, here's the money. Give me one. You know. But it sure made it look cool. I think. Yeah, yeah, it does look really cool, and uh, the SWFA SS scope on top, that's the uh, the 10X, so that's, that's a good match. So, yeah, so for those of you that are looking for a, um, you know, kind of a, a budget scope, it, SWFA is kind of one of those that's better than budget. It's one of those that, despite what the price is, it's supposed to be really, really good. It rocks. Tracking is excellent. It, it goes where you tell it to go, and it goes back to where, you know, back to zero, hold zero. I have had no trouble with it in uh, probably two years I've had it. And this is something new that I put on this rifle. I've got it on the appropriate rifle. This what it deserves, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah that's a really it's, cool it's a scope. really awesome scope. Yeah, I'm and, happy. And to get your eye in the right spot, you have the Kydex riser there. Mm -hmm. uh, unlike my uh, my duct tape and uh, uh, foam and plastic one here, but hey, this actually worked out today. Um, so yeah, after action report on what I did with this rifle. Um, I am indeed very, very happy with how the glass worked out. Uh, I was expecting that to improve things quite a bit, and it really did. Uh, it was much easier to see what I was doing. I wasn't getting any of that astigmatism with the, uh, the image blurring around. Uh, so yeah, scope was great, tracking was great on that, and um, this thing was actually shooting really well. I improved the scores over last time, so um, uh, I'll have to go back and actually check what the scores were at the last one, but for the first two relays, um, it was a 167. I accidentally shot the wrong guy's target. Otherwise, that would have been about probably a 175 on there. But I had to throw away that that whole target. I was averaging about you know uh, eight points per shot, uh, a little bit higher than that. But um, we'll just assume that, that probably would have been about an eight again, and uh, that would that would have brought things up to about 175. Second relay, 177. So again, you know th those scores are improving over the last time. The comfort is also uh, vastly improved. The, uh, the recoil pad here is way better than that horrible flat thing that they gave me on the Boyds. Uh, this is very comfy. The whole rifle overall is comfy. I didn't have to try to squirm around to get my eye through the scope or anything like that. Uh, so overall, uh, it was all good, except in the third relay, um, I was shooting some loads that I developed over the winter and those were using uh, a different kind of brass. And during the winter, it was fine, but if you, if you know this sort of stuff, during the summer or when things just get a little bit warmer, uh, you can start spiking your pressures. So I actually had to back out of the, uh, the third relay. Uh, so couldn't score that one. Things were looking all right, maybe, but uh, I'm gonna have to rework some of my stuff. And uh, when I do the 1,000 yard match on the 29th, it's, uh, it should be a lot better. I'm going to make sure that I don't have any pressure problems or anything, and I should just be able to finish the match and actually get the full score. And I think that's pretty much it. Good seeing you out here. All right, you too. Yeah.
enjoyed it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.